Hello. All right. Oh, it's been it's been a little while since I've filmed, so I, I feel like I lost my uh, camera etiquette. Hello. Um, we're doing something a little different today. New day. It's a new day. Same sweater. So I still have some non furniture, non woodworking like things that I'm working on. So I figured it'd be nice to bring you guys along. Um, I'm I've been looking at a lot more smaller creators on YouTube, which is really difficult to find because they only funnel you like the same 10 video essays that you've already seen a hundred times on the explore page. But it's been helpful because uh, there's this one woodworker that I follow and he'll post like a two minute video that's just like me fitting together these table legs. And I love that. And that has inspired me uh, to come back here. I've been avoiding looking at the footage from a video project that I started a few months ago. It was the first project where I actually had a crew that I hired. I had a cinematographer, a producer, and a set designer and an actor like come shoot a like concept video for me. So I haven't looked at the footage because you know it was my first time being like creative director on set. There's something so like inextricably playwright or like director about black cat and just like throwing an unbuttoned oxford on top of the fit so i'm like kind of shy about looking at it because i know it's not going to be great because like i now that time has passed i'm like oh i could have done that i could have did this different but i got fresh eyes because it's been like two months and i finally need to unzip the file and actually go through and organize the, the files and stuff like that so I can put my post-production hat on. This is me watching this footage for the very first time. Haven't seen it in months. Um, let's see what the hell. Okay, yeah, this video has no audio. I have to sync it with the other tracks. Right. I think it looks good. Um, I'm finding some of the, the color to not be what I want. I like the framing though. Okay. And I know we have a lot of takes that are just like that where like the difference isn't, the camera only moved like twice that day. So the difference between the takes is what the actor is actually saying. I remember getting a tighter shot. Where is that one at? Okay. Oh no, I, I got a wider one. Oh, let's look at that. That looks cool. Oh, here's a tighter one. Okay. I'll, yeah, we're, I'm gonna have to like recolor this for sure. This is my producer friend <laughs> doing the, the clapping. Okay, and you see like, uh, this was my first time working with this actor and it was, uh, oh, I love this take, it's so big, I like it. It was interesting because, you know, he's uh, trying to like, you know, find the emotion that I'm trying to get him to land for, for each take, for each like progressive um, escalation of the amens. And a lot of them came out more confused, which is nice. I think that works. Like this dazed look he has right here, that, that's, I think that's going to work quite well. And some of them came out kind of like sad. I don't know if he did it on purpose, but it was like, instead of like a, can I get an amen, damn it. Uh, he, he, his embodiment of the pastor was more like, can I get an amen, damn it? Like, and I think it's gonna work. Um, it definitely changes the context of the, like it changes the, the meat, but I, I like that. I've been doing video as a medium and I had an idea for a project last year where it was essentially a just experimental film type of project that would have required an actor and a location. We uh, filmed it inside of a church um, 
I'm finding a lot of my work kind of steering toward religious um, grappling with the like uh, hypocrisies and like trauma and the weirdness of growing up in the church, you know, uh, at least my experience with that as a young gay kid. So the project, the working title is called Amens Only. And essentially it is a critique of the power imbalance of a church service um, where as parishioners, as like observers, we don't really get to participate beyond saying amen or doing things that otherwise affirm what's going on. You know, there's not really uh, avenues in a church service to uh, give feedback or ask questions or express any type of disagreement. You know, the only things you can really do for the pastor and ways you can, the only ways you can really engage with the sermon and with the message is to clap, sing, say amen, and give your money. Those are the only like engagement points in a church service. And it bothered me real bad as a kid because I grew up going to church every Sunday and I've always been like really inquisitive and chatty. I don't like to talk. <laughs> so having to sit quietly and just like not be able to engage really um, with that performance bothered me. So this project is an exploration of that and also a like deconstruction of that. It kind of turns it on its head. One thing that has changed since I started this project is I've gone back and looked at my church's YouTube channel, the church I grew up going to, and there was some videos from when I was like, from like 12 years ago when I was like a teenager and actually attending there every Sunday with my mom. And, you know, so I'm looking at sermons that I probably was sitting in the pews to like, see live but it just had this different like instantly different connection i felt to the pastor uh on my like my old pastor at my childhood church because even though i would sit in the pews every sunday looking at him like from that close up on the video just felt way more intimate than being in the actual room with him uh like this level of closeness, like hearing the same sermon at this level of closeness, um, I don't know, just instantly changed my brain's chemistry and added a lot of like empathy for me. It was very stressful and very difficult for me because I've been really struggling to get out of the need to plan, 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 like plan 100% of a project before executing it. And when it comes to creative work and art, like you really can't, like you have to leave a healthy amount of things undetermined and things like you have to leave a healthy amount of things still squishy and still able to be formed, you know, as you go along, as you bring in collaborators, as you, you know, encounter like obstacles and stuff on the day of the shoot and all that stuff. Like we got there and the audio was kind of messing up. The recorder didn't have enough. Ah, we forgot the SD card on the recorder, like the Zoom recorder. So we had to record it on the on a phone. And I don't know what that's going to sound like because I haven't listened to it yet. So, you know, but you just have to roll with that. Like as a constraint, if it sounds funky, then I'll probably uh, freak it and post and just kind of make it make it work so you have to leave that um amount of wiggle room for when things go left or you know when something else happened even if it's for the positive like the actor uh during this shoot was like he was a he wasn't like super experienced um but with the direction i gave him he he I mean, I'm also not an experienced director. So with the direction I gave him, like it didn't really land. Like he, his performance didn't come out the way I imagined it. Um, like I was asking him to give a more indignant and like angry uh, take 
uh, for one of the takes. And it came out kind of like, like pitiful and sad, like his performance, um, like the pastor seemed sad. And I was like, you know what? I can work with that. I, that kind of changes the context of the, the scene, but I think in a good way. So it's like, that was a really, uh, that was a very much learning experience for me uh, in being able to practice not trying to have it all figured out 100% before it, before it even starts, because you can't. Um, and by you, I mean me. I don't know if you can, but I can't. So that's what this project is. Um, and this is the, the footage and the stuff that I feel like, damn, like I wish I would have had a little bit more in me or had a little bit more experience or something to know to do something different is, you know, I think the framing, like the blocking of the scene is a little stiff. Like I wish I had asked the DP to go at least on the stage so that I could get like a like a sideways cut. Cause I'm imagining that in my head now, but I don't have that shot cause I didn't get that shot. And I also think I didn't get enough B roll of the empty sanctuary. So I have to overuse a lot of, a lot of the B roll I got, like, you know, like rewind it and like slow it down and stuff. But I think it'll be okay. Um, it's just having it like be okay. Seeing something not be exactly the way you thought it would be and be being okay seeing a project be in progress and like be working, uh, be a whip, like be work in progress and not judge it as if it's a final product. As I'm editing it, it's just, it just, at each project I edit differently. So like this one, I think I'm going to spend more time collecting references um, for like vibe and also for like visual reference for what I want the end product to look like. And I'll probably bring some of those in because because I didn't get a whole big variety of shots on the shoot day. I think I'm going to have to pull in some like external images and maybe some like um, like B-roll from something else and make it more like video collage. But that's just my assumption going. Since I laid my... Burdens down. 